In war, the duty of those of us who survive is to ensure that their deaths aren't in vain, and to keep telling their stories. This quote stood out to me the most, and by the end of the film, I was brought to tears by it. My grandfather fought in World War II in the Pacific. His ship was sunk by a Japanese torpedo, and he lost many fellow comrades in that moment. I noticed that he rarely ever talked about the war, I think it bothered him, but when he did we'd all listen. And sometimes he'd bring up his comrades and just what they were like. And for me, just knowing that I had a family member in the war, that's what really got to me when I watched this film. But this quote and this message really can be applied to more than just veterans. It could be used for loved ones that are no longer with us. We should honor them and just let them live on by talking about them and sharing their stories. Even if they aren't heroes of war, they're still heroes to us. The Eternal Zero is a 2013 Japanese film directed by Takashi Yamazaki. I agreed to make a video for my fellow patron, Sandra. Her father fought in World War II, so this film is also very relatable to her as well. I received this film from SamuraiDVD.com. It's the only place I know of where you can get it. I looked everywhere. SamuraiDVD.com is just great because it has a huge selection of samurai films that you can't get anywhere else. It's also great because it has a lot of sales so you might want to check up on it often. If you want a discount on anything then you can use the discount code BUSHIDOBLUES, use it at checkout. So this isn't really a samurai film because it deals with World War II kamikaze pilots. But if you think about it, the kamikaze pilots were very similar to the samurai. Samurai who would, at a moment's notice, die for their lord or castle. There's even a bit of dialogue in this that compares a dogfight to a sword fight. In both, you'll have to struck your opponent before being struck down. <laughs> During World War II, thousands of Japanese pilots volunteered to be kamikaze, suicidally crashing their planes in the name of their emperor. It's kind of difficult to verify the exact figures, but it's believed that between 3-4 thousand Japanese pilots crashed their planes into an enemy target on purpose. It's said that only 10% of the missions were believed to be successful, but they sank more than 50 allied vessels. If you were to ask the Japanese youth today about their views of the kamikaze, they would probably tell you it's irrational, stupid, and maybe heroic. And the great thing about this film is it gets into that. There's a scene where there's some young Japanese people, they're friends and hanging out, and the topic of kamikaze pilots is brought up. And a few of them just completely trash it. They compare them to suicide bombers or terrorists. And what I really liked about this film is it gave me a different perspective. Here in the West we always kind of view the kamikaze pilots as a bad thing. We view them as being a bit psychotic. But 
this film actually gives you an argument supporting them. And I've never really seen a film get into that. Maybe the kamikaze pilots were really heroic. They gave their life to protect what they loved. The film was also apparently on Netflix for a little bit, but it didn't attract much attention in the West. And this was probably given that it's a film that casts a sympathetic look at Japan's kamikaze pilots. But it's a bit of a shame because at its heart, The Eternal Zero is an anti-war movie. And it's genuinely a very moving one. The story itself begins at a funeral and it focuses on two siblings. And their quest is to find out more about their grandfather that they never knew. They soon discover that their grandfather, his name was Miyabe, and he was a fighter pilot that died in a kamikaze attack on an aircraft carrier. But throughout the war, he was almost universally hated by all of his fellow pilots. They meet up with several veterans that knew him, and they all accuse him of being a coward that avoided combat at any cost. And after hearing the same thing over and over again, they understandably are about to give up. Then they decide to go for one last interview, and that's when things start to get more complex. And from there, the film unfolds this in Kane style through interviews and flashbacks, and we find out who Miyabe really was. I found the film to be a moving story of courage disguised as cowardice, and a man who firmly believed in life at all costs, rather than pointless death. There's a few really brilliant scenes where there's characters that have to juggle between certain death and uncertain life. Like when a character is urged not to kamikaze himself, but instead faces an even worse fate. It's really devastating. On the technical side of things, the film does do a decent job in recreating just the aerial combat through CGI. I don't think they could use real zeros because they don't have those anymore. So CGI is really the only option. Usually I'm not a fan of it, but they do do a pretty decent job here. But don't go in this expecting non-stop dogfights. The focus of the film isn't on the combat, it's more so a human drama. And it's a film that's capable of making you cry. Also, it doesn't cast the Japanese as being the bad guys. So for anyone looking for a movie just showing the bad side of Japan in World War II, you won't get any of that here. But there's plenty of other films that go into that. I for one have always been interested in the Japanese side in World War II. You'd never hear about it. And just the kamikaze pilots I've always found fascinating. And finally I get a story that shows kamikaze pilots from their point of view. Because it really is a fascinating subject whether or not you agree with it. Whether or not you die in battle, or you survive and return home to your family, your sacrifice was still real, and you fought for something bigger than yourself. But just living and the responsibility to protect others takes just as much courage. Miyabe at first wanted to survive to see his family, but in the end, he wanted to protect his comrades, and he wanted to see them live on and appreciate living like he did. It was a very powerful movie with many layers and I'm still thinking about it a week later. Great film. Thank you Sandra for recommending this film to me. I think that we both got a new level of respect to our family members just from seeing this film. You sharing your father's story with me honored him, and so I ask everyone else to just share their family members' story, someone you care about that's no longer with you. Something about them that was heroic. You could leave it in the comments, or you could just tell anyone. I highly recommend this film. Even if you only watch this channel for samurai stuff, you'll still find enjoyment in this. And actually, I did a video on the film When the Last Sword is Drawn, 
and that film was a metaphor for kamikaze pilots. You should rewatch it. Anyway, you can get this film from SamuraiDVD.com. Use the discount code Bushido Blues at checkout. If you want to support the channel and get early access to videos, and even get videos made in your honor, then please check out my Patreon. You could also join me on Discord to discuss many topics. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>